All right, it's a cold, cloudy day. See, I got my uh, swarm trap ladder there. I think I did a video on that ladder. Let's see, I think it tells down here. Maximum extended feet, 10 and a half feet. Um, so it's leaned up against the tree. You can see underneath it, the ladder's leaning up against an old strip of wood. That's some of those old 30 liter traps that I had. Um, I used to nail those strips on the back of those 30 liter traps and then I started screwing them on and the reason why is because a lot of times the weight of the box you know will pull those little cheap little brads out and even if you glue them them strips still want to come off you find your boxes laying on the ground so that's where I had uh, that one I've been putting swarm traps here in this tree oh I don't know seven eight years and I catch a lot of swarms right here kind of late on getting them out here a little bit late I mean you can see the trees have leaves on them but this is in Wilkes County North Carolina a little town called Ferguson got some land up here this is where I bring my bees for the sourwood honey flow uh, this is my little yard that I got set up going to be moving it this year down the hill make it a little bit easier to access and we'll take all these t-posts up there's a hive I left from last year that uh, swarmed during the sourwood honey flow and I just left them. I don't think they ever got their queen back mated. So just setting a few swarm traps up here. Honey flow definitely has not started here. Uh, the locust trees are blooming. So I guess that's a little bit of a flow, but poplars and clover still aren't there yet. So got a little ways to go. So I'm probably still got a pretty good chance of catching some swarms here. So got this trap up. I've got one more here in the truck that I'm going to go hang up. Forgot to get the camera out and video anything ahead of time. So here we go. This trap is facing probably southwest. All right, so we're here at another spot. It's uh, several hundred yards you know, down the mountain here. Across the top of that camper up that mountain is where we just hung that first swarm trap. And we're down here at the pond, and uh, we're going to hang another swarm trap down here. Now, when I bring my bees down here for the sourwood honey flow, this pond is just alive with bees. Uh, and if you know anything about bees, you know in the summertime when it gets good and hot, they start looking for places for water. And this pond and around the edges of this pond is a is a hot spot for the bees. It's a you know a steady source of water for them and you can sit up there on the porch and you can watch those bees just land and take off it's like an airport a bee port i guess you would say down here getting water but you know they're not just going to use this water during the uh honey flow they're also going to use it at all times of the year when it starts getting hot and my goal is put me a swarm trap down here near this water so maybe when I've got bees coming down here to get water they will find this uh, swarm trap and you know maybe if the hive decides to swarm they will move into my swarm trap so that's kind of what we are hoping for you know it's you know this pond is a landmark and like I've stated time and time again the bees are gonna they see things from the sky they're gonna know landmarks the bees in this area we'll know where this pond is and so we're going to put a swarm trap over here and hopefully they'll find it and then they'll know where a good place to swarm will be and look right here as i was looking down video in this we've got a four leaf clover so you know this spot's gonna be lucky we might have to throw that in the trap for good measure Hey, look, I turned the camera off to go get my swarm trap. And look, right beside of it, another one. Hey, two four-leaf clovers. This is double lucky. I need to hang out here for a little bit, see if I can find another one. All right. Got my hanger hung. It's probably not the safest way to be doing it. You can see that ladder is trying to lean on me. But if I can just get that box put up there, I'll be happy. So, 
go over here and prep this box. Got my two four leaf clovers on top. I've actually never hung a swarm trap down here at the pond. Been hanging swarm traps down here for about as long as I've been hanging swarm traps, but never actually hung them down here. Let's see. There's one, two squirts there on the top. Put our feed sack inner cover on there. A lot of people have kind of wondered why we do that, why I use these inner covers. Well, the thing is, I'm putting a top on that swarm trap. And if I don't put something between that top and that box, those bees are going to propolize the top to the box. And it will be nearly impossible to uh, get that top off without actually just pulling all the frames up out of the box. It's an absolute mess. These feed sacks are the feed sacks that I use whenever I uh, feed my cattle and horses. So I just save those sacks and lay them on there. Sometimes I trim them up a little bit. So they're essentially free. Now my feed store and a lot of feed stores, you can buy the sacks and they're normally like 40 or 50 cents a piece. So still it's, if you got a scrap piece of wood or paneling, you can put on there underneath it. But for me, that's, that's what I use because it's free and I've got it. So let's go hang this box. All right. So I got that box hung up again. We're hanging them kind of high today, 10 and a half foot ladder standing up close to the top so the box the entrance is probably 11 or 12 feet up got it sprayed with our swarm commander and i'm telling you guys if you have not tried the french cleat there's a bunch of different ways to make it a lot of people have posted you can do the 45. if you do the l-shaped cleats like i did just make sure you don't cut them exact uh, leave yourself some wiggle room and some play so they slide in and out really easy but I am telling you, that is the way to go. I pulled a swarm down yesterday, and whenever I get home, we're gonna video going through it, transferring it to a hive. But it literally took five minutes or less. I pulled my truck up to the tree, climbed up there. I took the ratchet strap off. Again, the ratchet strap's not holding the box on the tree. The French cleat is. The ratchet strap for me is just holding the lid on because I don't want to put a rock or something up there, and then it fall on somebody's head and kill them. So. <coughs> Took the ratchet strap off, picked the box up, set it in the back of my truck. I had another box in my truck. I picked that box up, the empty one, set it on the tree, sprayed Swarm Commander on it, and left. I mean, it was less than five minutes. It sure beats the old way I did it with the brackets that I had to screw on the tree. Then I had to screw up through the bottom of the bracket into the hive. That was just such a pain. No tools required for the French cleat once you get it put on the tree. And if you build the cleat a hanger out of uh, treated wood, you can tra take these traps down in the fall leave the cleat on the tree, come back, and uh, use them again next year. All right, so I got home and uh, got my grass mowed. Sun's out now, it's warming up. And I've got some bees on this swarm trap here that we hung up earlier this year. I normally catch a swarm in this trap, but I just don't know if that's a swarm yet. I'm not sure if those are scout bees uh i don't think it's a swarm yet they could just be scouts really checking it out maybe they're getting ready to move in but what i'm thinking it probably is is i'm thinking that it's probably the bees from this swarm trap that we're getting ready to move into a hive we'll let this car go by i think it's probably those some of those workers from that swarm trap that we're about to go check out I think they've gotten confused and you know I moved them last night and tried to put some sticks in front of them but so they don't always make it back to the to their hive whenever you move them that's why a lot of people claim that you lose 20% of your bees every time you move them but there is the box that's I don't know potentially gonna have a swarm potentially not but if we look right around the corner you can see those two dots way down there at the end well the dot on the right is the swarm trap that we're headed to so i don't know time will tell i'll meet you out there
All right, so here it is. Guess we can uh, move our sticks now. And of course, I did not bring a uh, any form of tripod, so we're just gonna have to do the best we can. I might see if I can get something over here to prop this phone up with. So I got a empty hive over there. I'm gonna go grab it. There's our that one swarm that we transferred over in the video. Here's another one. So let me go grab a hive and see if I can't get this thing propped up. sides of this frame are just full of eggs.
All right, so I finally found her. See if I can get her. I think she's kind of hard to see with my sunglasses on. Right there. Really kind of unique color there. She's got uh, half of her back is bronze and the other half is black. Her, the tip of her tail is black. But that's her. They must have not have been there long because uh, they've got this frame they haven't got a lot of eggs in the other two frames that are in the box they've gotten uh they've gotten some eggs in i think both of those and there's a little bit on that frame that's still in the swarm trap but no cat brood all eggs no, not even any larva so that i must have i must have found them right when they had uh just moved in so let me finish moving them in there i'll let you watch